What's up, everybody? It is the Best Bot Kid Smooth, and I am back with another video discussing Bethesda once again, and we're probably going to be discussing it tomorrow on Planet Xbox, and of course on Friday on Let's Talk Games Podcast as more information arise, right? So, we all know, like the last video uh, I did in regards to this, uh, this, uh, this uh, big uh, extrava, extravaganza, between Xbox and Bethesda. Uh, deal closed. Everybody's officially tweeting about it. Xbox Wire post, the post I was waiting for yesterday, happened uh, today. Um, and uh, they're all together now. And an interesting Xbox Wire post came out. And uh, now that the deal is final, we are exactly where we were with this deal last week let me explain we're going to read this article together so i like this uh this image bethesda joins xbox xbox plus bethesda you got all the bethesda zenimax ips at the top all the xbox original ips at the bottom you know what i mean now i mean you got a uh, bj blastoids and you got the, the the chick from minecraft you got the dude from dishonored you got the fort to car you got pit boy you got kate diaz you got Doom guy, you got the Sea of Thieves girl, you got the, you got the, that's a Starfield or the Prey, I think that's the Prey character. Um, I could be wrong. You got Master Chief, you got the Skyrim character, you got uh, Senua, you got the Rage character, you got the plane for Flight Slim, and you have the Evil Within thingy, and you got the Age of Empire. It, it's just a pretty mashed up uh, image, you know, to represent how much IPs. Xbox now has. All right, officially welcoming Bethesda team to Xbox. All right, let me read this correctly. Officially welcoming Bethesda to team Xbats. Oh my God, I can't read today. Officially welcoming Bethesda to team Xbox. All right, publisher, and this is this post is by Phil Spencer at 6.30 a.m. this morning, or pretty much 9.30 a.m. my time, East Coast. He says, Publish, publisher of iconic gaming franchises will expand Xbox diverse portfolio on Xbox Game Pass. This is an exciting day for Xbox. Today, we officially complete the acquisition of Zenimax Media, parent company of Bethesda Softworks. It's an honor to welcome the eight incredibly talented development studios. Bethesda Game Studios, id Software, Zenimax Online Studios, Arcane, Machine Games, Tangle Gameworks, Alpha Dog, and Roundhouse Studios, and their passionate global communities to the Xbox family. It's eight studios, eight, eight, for the price of one, right? All right, let's go. It says, now that everything is official, we can begin working together to deliver more great games to everyone at every step building towards this moment. I've been inspired and motivated by the creativity, insight, and community first approach of the talented people at Bethesda. Our goal is to give these teams the best foundation for doing their greatest work and to learn from them as we continue to build Xbox into an inclusive platform for all players. Okay, now here is the paragraph that gets everybody's blood boiling. What are we about to find out? Are we going to break the hearts of the PlayStation fanboys? Can them Sony drones finally go to bed? Can Xbox do what PlayStation has been doing to Xbox with this one paragraph? Well, let's find out. It says, this is the next step in building the... Uh, industry leading first party studios team a commitment we have to our xbox community with the addition of the bethesda creative teams gamers should know that xbox consoles pc and game pass will be the best place to experience new bethesda games including some new titles in the future that will be exclusive to xbox and pc players yeah okay that paragraph let me read it let me read it. Let me read it. With the addition 
of the Bethesda creative teams, gamers should know that Xbox consoles, PC, and Game Pass will be the best place to experience new Bethesda games, including some new titles in the future that will be exclusive to Xbox and PC players. Now, there's so many ways to look at this. You got, okay, so some Xbox games are gonna, some Bethesda games are gonna be exclusive to Xbox and PC in the future. So how far into the future? How many is some? Is it a little bit of games that Bethesda's doing is gonna be exclusive? Some little bit of games while everybody, everything else remains multi-plat, right? Or is it a lot, in your, is it a lot of Bethesda games and then some will remain, you know, multi-plat? Like, it's, it's just unfair that everybody else can acquire studios, Sony, Nintendo, whatever, Google, Amazon, and it's like, Fuck you. That's just what it is. With Xbox, it's like, you get a game. You get a game. You get a game. You get a game. And you probably get a game. It's like, come on, man. Like, like we, we need some clarity, dude. We need some clarity. Right? So, and then I read it. And, and, and after I read this for the first time, I, I kind of got irritated on Twitter. And that's where my rant came from. Uh, I was just a little bit irritated. And then I thought, well, we already know... Zenimax Online games, Fallout 76, Elder Scrolls Online, Fallout Shelter. Eh, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, we know Deathloop is already a multi-plot game. It's not out yet. It comes out in, 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 in May, but it's exclusive first on PlayStation. Xbox down 02 in Bethesda games already. First on PlayStation, Deathloop. That's in May. And then their second game, they get Ghostwire Tokyo. First on PlayStation, so we know those are those games are technically multi-plat after, um, and they will appear on Xbox afterwards later. But the, I, I'm looking at this. I was like, how should I take this paragraph, right? Because it says Xbox consoles, PC, and Game Pass will be the best place to experience new Bethesda games. It should say the only way, but the best place. All right, so that means there's a worst place. Worst place is what? PlayStation Switch. Right, and then I look at future that will be uh, with some new titles in the future that will be exclusive to Xbox and PC players. Xbox and PC players. Xbox and PC players. Exclusive Xbox and PC players. Oh, oh. So some 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 of these games may not come to mobile. Some of these games may not be streamable. I I, I don't know. I don't know how to take it. I don't know how to take it. But it's um. I think. Xbox has um, had an opportunity here, right? They could have still did the some, same thing without giving hope to a PlayStation. PlayStation doesn't give us hope because they don't give us anything, right? So if, to Xbox gamers, they don't give a fuck about Xbox gamers. Xbox somehow still cares about the PlayStation gamer, but they, 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 they could have d- done more good with this had they, you, you could have, you want to add value to Xbox and Xbox Game Pass, right? Like, I feel like that shit, that sentence wasn't needed, but it's there. So now, for however long, we're just going to continue to wonder, will an Xbox first party studio be developing a game for PlayStation? Pretty much. That's that's that, that's what we're gonna be doing for the until until these games start releasing or until these next announcements. And I apologize for this annoying guys train that's about to come by. Um, so the follow-up paragraph it says, as we shared previously, it is vitally important that Bethesda continues making the games the way it always has. Now one can look at this. The way it always has. Well, they always have made multiplats. They've always made RPGs and shooters and horror games. If that's the case, if I'm reading it just like that, then I expect nothing at all to change. Nothing at all to change. It's just confusing. Um, as we shared pre- previously, it's vitally important um, that Bethesda continues making games the way it always has. We look forward to empowering Bethesda creative teams to reach even more players around the world, helping make future Bethesda titles and the biggest and most popular games in their history. Xbox and Bethesda have long shared a common vision for the future of gaming, both as fans and as creators. Bethesda understands the potential of Xbox Game Pass. 
We would also like to honor the life and memory of close friend Robert A. Altman, founder of Zenimax Media. Robert believed deeply in the power of gaming, and we are privileged to be able to continue his work by joining forces with the teams he built and led for many years. I will miss the opportunity to work directly with him on the future of our combined teams, but I know at this that his spirit will live on in the shared work we do and motivate us to make this partnership all he envisioned. Thank you to all our players for joining us on this incredible journey and to the millions of Bethesda fans around the world. Now that we're one team, we can start working together on the future ahead. We will have more to share about what's next for our teams later this year. In the meantime, to properly celebrate this special moment, we are bringing additional Bethesda games into Xbox Game Pass later this week. Stay tuned for more details. Yes, um, so as I expected, I expect the remainder of Bethesda titles to fall right in the game pass by Friday. Um, I'm, I'm personally waiting for, you know, Evil Within, um, uh, the, the last two games, uh, Wet from last generation, Quake, um, a, a Quake 4 is still not backwards compatible, I make mean, Quake champions. And I'm also, we're also waiting for these enhancements for the Series X, you know, Fallout 4, 60 frames per second, that, you know, that FPS boost, maybe, a, you know, you know, a stealth Skyrim, you know, Optimized edition for the uh, series consoles. You know what I mean? Double the frame rate on Wolfenstein and and, and, and Doom and Prey. Prey is still a measly 30 frames per second. I'm, that's the stuff I'm waiting for. Um, it's just, I'm happy that Xbox is a part of, I mean, Bethesda is a part of the team Xbox and that they, they've grown their first party studios from having literally seven uh, three years ago to now having 23 and having like a, a, a freaking roadmap that looks insane at this point in time with games and we know what they're doing with game pass and, and game pass is the driving force um it's going to take some uh, some getting used to um in terms of the xbox the way that they're moving we know i'm a console player i game on console i'm barely I'm, i don't game on mobile I, 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 like it's it's rare when i'm if i'm streaming a game and i barely game on pc right so i'm a i'm a console dude i like my controller i like my console i like beastly powerful consoles i like i like my 4k i like my 60 frames and 120 frames per second at a console level so i know game pass is in everybody's head like for example we think of netflix netflix can be accessed anywhere it's just a a, a way to consume movies right same with disney plus disney plus is everywhere um, um it's just a way to consume movies but the content that's inside you know netflix can't be found in disney plus and the content that's found in disney plus can't be found in, in netflix i mean disney uh paramount all these dudes did some cutthroat things uh and pulled content from services you know to bolster their services so game pass right now it's only on pretty much Xbox and PC and, and and mobile. I mean, I don't foresee Game Pass appearing on PlayStation and um, and Switch. And so I think I feel like if they're I feel like if you're going to adopt this model, you know, you got to you got to bring people. You got to show people to have people invest into your your platforms, your Xbox platforms, your Windows platforms and um, the Game Pass platforms by, you know, feeding that content with the with exclusive some way, somehow, man. Um, I still personally stand by what I said. A lot of people are taking this and they twerking their little like, you know, bone ass cheeks uh, to the idea that, you know, uh, the games are going to just re uh, remain multi-plat. I still think Starfield is coming out this year, and I think that's going to be exclusive to Xbox. I think if Wolfenstein is coming out, it, it's probably exclusive to Xbox. I, I mean, this whole thing, we got to treat trilogies right. You know what I mean? Sony didn't give us the opportunity to play Street Fighter uh, Five. We're not going to get the opportunity to play Final Fantasy 16, and we're not going to see the opportunity to play Sunset Overdrive 2. So, I'm not falling for that. I, f I feel like there's a lot of like vagueness, obviously, in this message. It doesn't confirm anything. It, all it does is it does guarantee that Xbox is going to have an exclusive and that all these games are going to Game Pass day one. So nothing's stopping that um, um, from happening. No, all they or they what they could potentially do on some fuck shit is um, void the death loop and um contract for the exclusivity for death loop and ghostwire tokyo and those games just be flat out multi-plats uh on release day i mean that could honestly if you think about it i mean i'm pretty sure there's a workaround um but I, sometimes i wish xbox was just a little bit more cutthroat 
uh, than what they are because I, I don't understand being in an industry right where your competitors are completely cut through and your competitors treat treat you as if they want they don't they don't want you to succeed at something. I mean, if Sony if Sony really wanted Xbox to succeed and to remain competitive, they wouldn't be taking the, the amount of third party games that you that become exclusive or some crazy asinine exclusive or the content on multiplayer games that Xbox users can't access. It's like, come on, bro. Like Xbox, you now, I mean, if you're not going to fight fire with fire um, in a, in a form of like, you know, let me buy some third party games or do some fuck shit with some third party games, at least utilize your now first party um, IPs. And that's really my opinion. I'm sure there's going to be a whole ton of opinions. We're going to find out more on Thursday, March 11th. And unfortunately, I work this day. So I'm literally going to be like work, walking on eggshells because I've got this big meeting. And, you know, I'm going to know what's going to go on some video presentation be, uh, with Bethesda and Xbox. We'll see what's going on. I don't think they're going to talk, show any games. I think some of this messaging is going to get cleared up. They got something else on the 23rd and, and we're, we're not going to really see any games until, you know, May, June, the E3 time frame. But I'm happy it's done. I'm looking forward to these games coming to Game Pass, see what they add. And hopefully we get games like Quick Champions ported to the Xbox. And hopefully some of these backlog titles that Bethesda have get that Xbox Series X and S um, treatment. That would be greatly appreciated. But I'm happy that Bethesda joined the team. Xbox is healthy. Their uh, gaming business is very healthy. And um, one thing you can't really say at this point is Xbox has no games. I mean, um, so we'll see. But um, that's the video for you guys. I apologize for the random background noise. Uh, and, uh, you know, family, wife's watching TV and they're just like overly loud. So, but I'm not gonna have time to edit this out, the, edit that out the video. So you guys are just gonna have to hear it and deal with it. I'll try to throw some music in the background if I could. But it's the video, it's Kid Smooth. Xbox is the best box, I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. It is over. Starfield's an exclusive, baby, to Xbox. So is Wolfenstein 3. And so is this, that, and a third.